Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today you've joined me in what I call purgatory, which is where our cars come to sit while I think on what to do with them. We're here today because right there is a 78 F-150 that we picked up on a trade for a truck that some guy needed some parts off of, and we ended up saving that one from getting cut up. We don't know a damn thing about it besides supposedly the motor's bad, so let's go dig into it and see what we got ourselves into this time. So yes, like I mentioned, this is a 78 or 9, currently being determined, F-150 Ranger. This truck was absolutely loaded. Now we saw this on Marketplace one day and the listing was that they were going to part it out because they only wanted the rear axle and the front spindles. Well, if you remember a long time ago, we got that truck and another truck just like this, but in terrible condition, that ran and drove. So I traded that for this in hopes to save this from being crushed. As you can see, we were obviously able to save it and we brought it home and parked it right here. Since then, it has not been touched. We haven't really even looked at it until today. It's been sitting out here for a couple months and off the road for a long, long time. What's the issue date? 96, 97, so 24 years ago. The story with this truck was that they were driving it, blew the 302 up that was in it, and got another one and set it back here. Well, this has been out in the elements for a long time, and I guarantee this one is also junk. Today's goal is to move this over into the shade, get the extra motor and stuff out of the back, clean it up, and see what the hell we have got ourselves into this time. Now, Mook already has one of these. I already have a couple of these. Dad loves the 79 F100s, so we've decided, hey, Dad, this would be a good truck for you to have. But, of course, we've got to make it run and drive first. So that is our goal. Find a 302, we can stick it in there and see if we can put this whole thing back on the road. Let's see our some tires though. Get this over in the shade, start cleaning it out. So this truck is interesting in the way they ordered it, where it's a 302, which is very uncommon. If you see those usually in these, it's a, a freewheeling package, like what mine was. You could order them normally, but especially 78, 79, all 351, 400 modifieds, or inline sixes, like all of them. This is a 302, that's why this truck piqued my interest so much, is because I love the 302 combination with these trucks. And beyond that, it is a full trim level truck, where it has the bed trim, the side in the, the dent trim, and the bottom trim, which is usually an Explorer thing. And it is an F-150 Ranger. No. Um, it's not an XLT. Or it's right. not an XLT. It's got air conditioning. Someone put cruise control in it. Got the better radio. Uh, it has full length door cards. Nice seat, good headliner. So it was pretty much absolutely loaded. It even has the bumper guards up front. So yeah, very interesting combination truck. So I thought, you know what, let's grab that. And dad has always wanted a 79, so this would be a good truck for him. 79 two wheel drive. 79 two wheel drive, yeah. All right, he's gonna throw that down in the shed so we can take the good parts off of it someday and then probably scrap the rest. Uh, let's take a look inside. We're missing a set of keys. Uh, we're also missing a title, unfortunately. But we do have these sick-ass sunglasses and a bunch of pop tabs. Oh, hey, this is that stuff Dad's always talking about when we have him in videos for body work. He's always talking about how you could buy touch-up enamel that was paint matched to your truck. And here's an old can, an OEM Ford can, or I guess probably a marker if I had to guess. Nope, no, it's like a little dipper. Look at that, I've never seen one of these. That is badass. I mean, I've seen them for sale today, but not an old school one. I was 
that we can save it. I don't think, oh yeah, they had the... Okay. There we'll wash it up. We'll go get the garden hose and see what we got when we're done. You what? I have a butt potato. You have a butt potato. Everyone, it's mom's butt potato. Thank you for sharing this with us. Very we have a 79 F-150. Wow, there's enough dirt in there to grow potatoes. Arguably also a butt potato. <laughs> Okay, well, that's absolutely incredible. There's a dent here, a tiny one there, and one right where that motor was dropped in the bed. Other than that, this is the best truck bed floor I've ever seen. Oh, it turned. Not nicely, but it did turn a little. I mean, that should be about how hard they are. Uh, we can get a 15 16th and try to spin it over. All right, moment of truth. Are we gonna have a Ford video this week? Mm-mm. Ooh, wait, do that again. I think the front of the crank is moving left to right. I can't say I've ever seen that before. There's no reason the crank should break up front, though. It's a solid hit. What is that? <laughs> it really did blow it up. There's yeah, junk. Can take a part to see what the heck happened to that. Yeah. We'll take a long weekend next time you're home from work and month? pull this out. Yeah, so let's fast forward a month. All right, so it has been just shy of a month and we are now at the shop. The reason we are down here is because I found this bad boy on Marketplace for a hundred bucks. Some guy over in Boone bought a boat just for the trailer and before he scrapped the boat, he thought, ah, oh, hell, let's see if anyone wants the motor. Long story short, someone did, it was me. I know nothing about this. I don't know how many hours. I don't know if it's a good motor. I don't know if it's a frozen block that might be cracked. I have no idea. What I do know is that it's Thursday and Saturday I'm going to be headed back home to the folks place so that dad and I can swap hopefully this motor into that truck. So without further ado, let's see what the hell we got ourselves into this time and see if we have a good motor or if we're going to be heading into the shed to find another one this weekend. First things first, we should probably see if this thing is seized because I have no idea. Let's see if this thing spins. Ooh, <laughs> oh boy. Oh, kind of. I wonder if that's the output drive bearings that are frozen. I wonder if that's what I'm feeling. Although it does sound very crunchy in here. I think we need to start stripping this thing down. See what we can do about uh, getting some oil in there and get this motor freed up. There we go. All right, let's see if she spins now. Hey, that's what we want to see. Well, I heard some water hissing, so I think the next step is uh, pop our Spark plugs out and see if we can drain those cylinders because I think one of them might have some, some fluid or rust in it. See these spark plugs and everything are rusty would be a bit of an understatement, at least on the outside. Let's hope the inside's good. I don't see any frost plugs popped out. Oh yeah, they're, they're pretty nasty. Let's get all those out and get the bore scope in there. Sweet. That's good. No water in the block, she probably didn't freeze. So I got my bore scope out. Our pistons look great. Our cylinder wall has a beautiful crosshatch pattern. Like barely even any hours on this motor. Oh yeah, look at look at that cylinder wall. That is that is a textbook perfect cylinder wall. But if we come up to this guy with a wet plug, as you can hopefully see, that's water. So that cylinder is single-handedly the problem we're facing with getting this motor to turn over. The walls still look good. It looks like, thankfully, the piston was all the way up. Yeah, it was. You can see, ooh, that's a lot of rust. <laughs> but you can see all the rust at the top of the cylinder. So our piston was all the way up when it uh, got flooded. 
So that's good news. Most of our cylinders are going to be okay. Seven out of eight is a passing score. So I think this will probably be just fine. We'll get that cylinder cleaned out, fill it with oil, get those rings freed up, and this will probably be a really good motor, especially for a hundred bucks. All right, at this point, I've got pretty much a whole can of sea foam that someone sent us. Thank you, whoever that was. I have emptied that into the cylinders, so let's see if we can get a rotation. Come on. Oh, it's through the sticky spot. It's the impellers of the water pump going through all that, uh, all, all, that, that sand all that rust and sand. That's exactly what it is. This is especially something you'll see in boats because see all the sand on my hand. Um, they'll suck up sand and dirt and stuff from the bottom of the lake, and you'll get way more block rust. And this is this is mostly just dirt and sand with some rust flakes in it. So if you ever get a boat motor that you're trying to get running again, probably a good idea to pull the hoses out and really flush that motor out. We'll actually do that to this motor before we put it in the truck so we don't circulate this through the block. We can flush it out prior. And this is this acts like a trap right here and kind of holds it as it loses fluid. And then you fire that back up and you get turbulent water again and whoop, it's gone. It's not collected anymore. So get that bottom radiator hose off. Let's see how much oil flies out. Rusty starter. starter off and as you can see our bindex is indeed really dirty and rusty and not going anywhere so I'm gonna spend some time with this and a big old screwdriver Let's see if we can get that guy freed up get some PB in on those teeth see if I can knock them loose hey that actually might have done it oh it's still sticky but we're getting there Alrighty, we got our starter back on. We actually ended up having to take it completely apart because after that clip, the uh, bandage locked up. So we pretty much rebuilt this starter for the 30 seconds we're about to use it. But, here we go. Let's see how she spins. It made a huge mess, but it spins. I guess at this point we'll get ourselves a mop and clean all this up. At that point we'll go ahead and put spark plugs back in, get some spark to it and see if she'll make some noise. And then continue converting it over to uh, truck use. A little time on the wire wheel has left us with eight, yeah, pretty much brand new spark plugs. I'm good to go for what we're doing. Dad is cleaning the points right now, so I'll go ahead and put these back in and we'll see if this thing makes some noise. Alright, we have our ignition hooked up. We've got 12 volts to the coil. We had to grind the hell out of our points to get them to hold continuity long enough for there to be more than one single spark, but all that's behind us now. Let me guess, it lost spark. Nothing? Wait. I slap you. It happened again. We did it again. What's, what's, what you got there, Moog? A dog. <laughs> Classic. No. You've got to be kidding me. Where did it come from? From this. 
question mark I'm seeing right now is that the timing cover is cast iron instead of aluminum like all the trucks so but I mean the pump looks to be the same bolt patterns everything else looks to be mostly the same we'll figure that all out when we get there let's go ahead strip this thing down get it up to where the truck is pull that motor out this one in and have ourselves a ripping automobile Done. And there it is. A little bit of work. Our engine is ready to drop in the truck. Phoenix, thank you for your, your help this evening. No problem. Uh, <laughs> hey, if anyone's in the area and they need some powder coating done, where should they go? Nevada, Iowa. You want, you want to spin around, give them a phone number or something there? Don't bug them unless you got actual work that needs done. <laughs> I'm not calling to chat with you about Kevin. <laughs> Has that happened? Yes. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry. Leave this poor man alone. <laughs> unless you want your stuff covered in powder. All right, let's cut to the folks place. And here we are. If you guys have been a long time viewer of the channel, you will recognize that room right there. That is where everything began for me. We're up at my folks place where this truck was last time we touched it. And since then, nothing has changed besides we took the hood off. We've got our boat motor and all of our stuff in the back of the truck. And we've got the blown up 302 in this truck. Our plan is to remove this, swap all of our accessories over, and then put that back in, and hopefully be driving around by tomorrow afternoon. To make that happen, we have a lot of work to do. We have to rebuild the carburetor, do an intake swap, do an engine swap, make sure our trans and everything's good to go, get it back in the truck, and fix something in the front brakes. So without further ado, let's pick up some wrenches and get to work. Hello, kitty cat. Give it. Give it. The Megatron Plus. Get this 12 volt Decepticon ass looking ass out of here. We've got most of our wires and hoses out of the way. Next up is going to be our exhaust manifold. Gonna sub. And then we'll do our motor mounts, trans mount, drive shaft. It should be ready to come out in an hour. Dad has sandblasted and painted our four barrel Edelbrock intake, which we're going to sneak onto the top of this uh, Mercury Marine engine. So you said we have to sneak the car the intake onto the... Yeah, with the stealthy so black like paint. Yeah, don't let it know it's okay. there. Or okay. it might, it's skittish. It might, it might blow it up. <laughs> now that our belts are off, we can see exactly how bad the uh, crank is broken. I'm surprised you can't just pull it straight out. I can feel it. <laughs> so I'm doing my least favorite part of any engine swap or basically anything other than engine day and I'm removing the exhaust header bolts. This takes more patience than I have. So I'm trying my hardest right now to not snap any of these. So far I'm two for two. That one fought me a little bit 
it came out and it felt like it was twisting so I went back in and just a little bit of a time until she came out so so far so good use patience and hand tools exclusively on exhaust bolts getting to be that time of year again mook the mess makers are out the mess makers <laughs> By the way, anyone that's wondered, uh, there's the Golden Oldsmobile. If you didn't catch it in the last episode, we gave it to my dad. He's been working on it, get a lot of good things done. So that car is in good hands, or not. He takes really good care of it. Yeah. <laughs> what? Going on diet. It's a no carb diet. No carb diet, only banana. I don't think you even, <laughs> even need this, really. Hey, oh, hey, hey! <laughs> Put it back. Do not get between me and my coffee. Oh no! I always forget one. It's probably a rebuildable car. Oh no. I've always wanted one. Goodbye. <laughs> Alright, we're down to our last two bolts, the motor mounts. These ones suck. So dad's down there popping those off. I've got our lift plate on up here. We should be good to go ahead and do one of these. I've never pulled an uh, engine with a trans on an F100 before, so this is a bit of an experiment. And experiments are known to go wrong, so. When you're taking an engine out, there's a lot of stuff that's going to get missed. Take it slow, get some nice long pry bars, don't go shoving your arms in there, or that motor's gonna pop once you get that friction point gone. You saw it jump around as I did the exhaust, and it's gonna smash your arm, lose a finger, it's not a good time. Take it slow, take it safe, preferably use an engine hoist, but we don't have one up here, so we're using the Super Tensile Strength Tester 3000. <laughs> I think it's time for lunch. Yeah, 12.30. Noon 30. Noon 30. At this point, we're gonna pressure wash the truck, get everything cleaned up, pressure wash the trans, clean that, and then work on dressing that motor to bolt to that trans, reverse it right back in. And then hopefully, we'll have a boat engine and a truck. So the reason that we pulled the trans with the engine, instead of leaving the trans in the truck like I usually do on F100s, is because A, I wanted to see if this was possible, and see if it was easier, which it was, and B, the torque converters on these engines have studs instead of nut plates, which makes it an absolute nightmare to align the motor mounts, dowels in the trans, and all the torque converter studs at the same time because the flex plate has pressure on it. And when those studs ram into the flex plate and they're not in their holes, you can't turn them individually. Plus, there's no access to them on a Ford transmission. As many things as Ford did right, transmissions and access covers was never one of them. And then reason number three was the fact that since this motor is seized, we couldn't even turn it over at all to get to all the nuts to take the studs off. So our only hope was to lift the motor and pull the torque motor out of the pump and leave it attached to the flex plate, which it's easier done if it's not in the truck, and which is exactly what I have done here. And there we go. Now we can get to the bolts for our torque converter, reinstall it back on the trans, get our new motor bolted up, all our accessories on, go back in the truck. I'm really glad you went through reasons A, B, and three. That was really helpful. All right, so as you can see, everything is pretty nasty in there. We need to get a screwdriver. It looks like it break up some of that stuff down there, but we actually did a revival on the side and had to get our pressure washer going again which we hadn't had running since we did, since we took the motor out of the Le Mans. It's probably, like probably one of the last engines we pulled up here. Anyway, yeah, we're gonna fire this thing up and uh, spray off our transmission and everything in here, get it all cleaned up, so that when we go to put everything back in, we got a nice clean workspace.
it. <laughs> Get heck out. <laughs> See the damage. Oh, right there. Yep, that's broken. They broke it in the center of the counterweight. That's interesting. I can't spin. So at this point, we have absolutely everything we need off this. And right as we we're getting ready to throw it away, we noticed uh, this motor's actually been rebuilt once, or at least taken apart and refreshed. Because you see, there's a number five, and a five, and a here's a six, and a three, and a four. So they have stamped all the rods and correspondence from front to rear, as well as the pistons have numbers stamped into them, which is a sign of a machinist having been in here and having probably redone this engine at one point. This is now a retired engine. It's junk. It's stuck. It's never going to be any good to us. It's a non-roller block. I don't care about non-roller blocks. They are a dime a dozen, and you could have a roller block for two dimes a dozen. They are way better. So, off to the scrap pile. Get the other motor ready. Motor mounts are on. Mook is pulling our carbitator off. So we're going to put our lift plate on, and we'll finally mop this up. Alright, so we've got our motor set in here to make sure everything's going to work. Since this truck has the stock exhaust, there is a crossover tube that the oil pan runs into. You can see when I move this header, the engine's actually sitting on that crossover tube. So we could change over to the truck pan that came out of here if we wanted to retain stock exhaust. But this exhaust is kind of rusted out either way. So we thought, you know what, let's just pull the motor back out and hack the exhaust off and put some headers on it give it a real exhaust because that's what we wanted to do anyway in the long run and then it'd sound way cooler because you know America. So as you can see I'm taking our intake off the boat motor and these bolts are in less than ideal condition nothing sticks to them at all yet I'm able to get them out and I'll show you guys how. This is also a tip that's good for like uh, the Ford 351 modified especially with or honestly almost any Ford with AC where the York compressor sits right here and it's impossible to get to that distributor bolt, you can do the same thing with a longer punch. Get a punch or a long screwdriver if you have a screwdriver with a solid steel core and you're going to try to bite into that bolt and push it in a counterclockwise direction. The distributor bolts usually have grooves on top that's almost like it's made to do that. So instead of spending like two days trying to get a wrench on it like I did once, you just go boop and they're loose on the distributor. So. Let's see if I can get this one loose here, for example. I'm gonna hit it down into it to build a groove and shock the threads loose. And then I'm gonna land in that groove and go in the loosening direction. And there it goes. As you can see, torque. Now I come in with my handy dandy pliers and take that bolt off. A Mercruiser 188 with an Edelbrock Performer 289 stealth style intake, which I mean we painted it black so you can't really tell. And then put the rusty bolts back in. That may or may not be the first Mercury Marine to ever receive a random set of Fox body short length headers that were sitting around. I'm pretty excited about this. Yeah, and Edelbrock. This, by the way, if we haven't mentioned it, this motor is completely built off of parts I had left over from all the other 302s we've done. Like, there's a gasket set, there's a random intake off the shelf, there's headers that were in the shelf, there's a motor we paid 100 bucks for. Oh shit, that's right, I need to start rebuilding a carburetor, don't I? Okay. Get to work! So for a carburetor for this engine, I went out to the shed at the folks place and found one of these. Back in the day, before I realized that buying used carburetors is a bad idea because they're usually completely hacked and they never quite run right, I would go around and buy $20 Holly Classic 600s or whatever people had sit on the shelf. So I had like 10 of the damn things. Well, this seems like a perfect occasion to put one to use because this is all about leftover parts. So let's get this thing rebuilt and ready to roll. All right, well, nice and late now. I'm pretty much done with this car. We got a couple things left and I thought I'd bring you guys along for the ride on those. I want to point out while I'm in here, if you're ever having troubles with 
getting a vacuum leak fixed. There is a little cork gasket on this guy right here. Zoom back out so you can see where that is. He goes right here on the secondary uh, diaphragm cup. And there's another one, which goes on this standoff, I believe, but is up on the choke assembly. And there's a gasket in this choke, and I don't think I've ever taken one apart because I've never found it necessary, but you never know. There's a gasket right here that separates the top and the bottom of the carp, which is what all these screws are for. Besides those, uh, the reason I have the camera on right now is to show you that even though this was working, this is what happens to an old diaphragm. Look how rusty and hecked up that thing is. And if you think for a second that that is operating properly the way it's supposed to, you are wrong. This is very stiff. This one is super soft. So I'll replace that, those last two cork gaskets, and we'll have a fully rebuilt carburetor. So it is the next morning. We put the fuel pump on, distributor, water neck, all these little things, and we're finally to the point of mating our transmission to our engine. And we suddenly realized that boat motors have studs in the block to align the housing for the starter and everything for the output drives. And transmissions have the studs in the trans. So we need to take one of those out. We made sure that we have no pilot bearing in the flywheel and that our plate is between the flywheel and the motor. And everything is back there in normal fashion. Another issue we discovered is that the water pump does not have any outlets for a heater torque. So we need to get a automotive water pump on there at some point. We're running out of time today. Uh, we only got a few hours left, so we're just gonna get this all together and in there, make it run, drive it around the yard, and then we'll come back and finish it all properly at a different date. So yeah, let's see if we can get these studs out, get this all bolted up. That, ladies and gentlemen, at least personally, is the first uh, Merc Cruiser with a C6 bolted to it I've ever seen. I'm so excited for this. Luke's doing our motor mounts, Dad's doing our trans mount. I'm going to start getting stuff like power steering and everything and what else not hooked up. And it's just, just plugging stuff in at this point. We made ourselves a nice mess in the shop already, of course. And if you're wondering, well Kevin, you said you got like nothing up here for tools. How are you managing to do all this? That right there is it. We've been doing this entire engine swap exclusively out of our custom setup Tang Portables Toolbox. With the exception of like a hammer and a pry bar and some other stuff we brought along as well as all of our fluids, which we take with us everywhere we go because of our decked truck boxes. Check those guys out at deck.com and those guys out at Tang Tools USA. All right, let's get some accessories bolted on this thing. All right, I'm putting the carb on. Trash. Hell yeah. I'm just making sure they're snug so I don't warp it. Yeah, don't torque these to heck. All right, as you can tell, we're to that point finally. We have all of our ignition hooked up. This guy mounted, so he's not gonna leak. We got our boat accessories still on. We do need to change the water pump, like I mentioned. We need to change this alternator. This is a one wire. We need the Ford style with the regulator. We got a carburetor on. We got our coil hooked up. We've got our throttle and everything hooked up. Long story short, we're ready. Let's see if it at least cranks. Did someone put a 90s Mustang starter in this truck? Because that's the only other time I've seen this happen. <laughs> that is terrible. All right, we need to check for spark. Go. So what we just experienced off camera was cranking it, and then I let off of the uh, ignition, and it went bop for a second. I unfortunately know exactly what that is. That's the Hall effect sensor is bad, or something in that circuit where 
when you cut the power to a Durasprite ignition, it makes a spark. So that means our box is still good. It's something our distributor is bad. Why don't we grab another distributor off that and motor? We do have another distributor. Let's go get that one. We'll try that. Can you put pressure in there to try to spin it a little? I was trying to spin it over there. Oh. oh, I just broke the vacuum canister off. Oh, yikes. Holy cow. Yeah, it's junk. In two different directions. So, changing the Hall effect sensor on a Dura Spark distributor is a nightmare. I hate this ignition system. Ford really let us down as far as transmissions and ignition systems went, but they made a damn good motor and truck. So, we have a couple options. I screw around with this in the 100 degree shop for a few more hours, or we stop and try again with a different ignition system in a little while from now. Do I have any small block Ford points distributors here? Probably not. We only have two small block Ford vehicles. Ah, oh, oh, we see? have three. Jesse's Galaxy. Hey, can we borrow your distributor for a couple minutes? I have a feeling I don't have an option, do I? Okay. You know what happens when Kevin borrows car no. Once upon a time, Kevin borrowed my starter and I never got it back in one piece. I think there's uh, one of those laying on my floor at the shop if, uh, if Mook hasn't put the starter in her truck yet. She's not home yet, so we could probably get this done before she's back. Don't tell her. Uh, oh, God. Is it fried? Dude, the it snapped. It's obliterated. The starter broke in half. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that. Well, whoops. I got you a new one. So, yeah. Ta-da! This is my home. Entry, please. <laughs> Brakes work really well. <laughs> Alright, let's go steal parts from perfectly working vehicles and see if our bullshit boat truck works. <laughs> <laughs> we have the point system from Jesse's Galaxy in this truck, and we are now going to verify Spark, and I'd bet a thousand dollars that it works. Ready? Yep. Got it. Got a Got a strong Spark. So I don't even know if I mentioned this, but we had the um, gas plumbed down to a bucket to try to blow the lines out a little more. Uh, I'd say we're probably good enough to just hook it up to the filter at this point. That, that probably got a good chunk out. So we're going to hook all that up. I need to move my distributor a tooth, it seems like, and then we'll try again. But hey, that, that right there was the first attempt of running a boat motor in an F100. All right, so we've been having some issues with, we think, our firing order. We got it to run a little bit. I had to move the distributor two teeth, but it runs on like half cylinder. So let's see if we can fix that. Yep, sure enough. Marine motors run the performance time firing order, which is a 351-302-HO firing order. So I put a new needle and seat in, but I think it was bad out of the box. Flooded.
seat, ruining all our fun. I think I'm deaf now. All right, so we are in an absolute thrash to get this thing to do a lap around the yard before the sun goes down in about eight minutes. I am just dumping trans fluid in this thing. And yeah, that's probably about half of what we need, but it's maybe enough to go forward, we'll see. Dad's got a radiator in. I got new hoses we gotta throw on. Uh, the problem with the carburetor in the dump truck video that we did at my buddy's Jed's place where we needed a new needle and seat O-ring. I got a needle and seat. I was like, oh, I'll save a couple bucks. Pull this O-ring off, go find a new O-ring at the shop. Forgot to do that part. Screwed myself over today by putting a needle and seat in. Tired last night at like 10.30 with no o-ring, so it's just fuel. So we got a new needle and seat that has an o-ring in, that should be fixed. Get these hoses on, fill this thing up, top off the trans fluid, fire it, and rip around the yard and be done. Before that sun goes down, it's now six minutes. So we'll see you then. Maybe a little more, you know, for the ladies. Luke, this is for you. Yeah, we have like two minutes before we lose light. So I'm gonna time this, he's gonna throw it in reverse and go. Hit it. Go ahead. That's good. Ow! I pinched myself. All right, let's spin. Go, go. this in. We got forward, so we're close. Okay, there's like one, yeah, so five, six, five quarts. I don't know. We. Oh, So there it is, in the nick of time, we were able to pull this off, get that truck to run and drive. The sun is literally below the horizon, and we are down to the last few seconds for the day. Huge thanks to Jesse for filming and helping this weekend. Dad for doing a lot of heavy lifting. Mook for all of her heavy lifting and hammer flailing. And thank you to you guys for watching this video, hopefully hitting the like button and subscribing if you enjoyed what you saw. As for this truck, like I hopefully mentioned in the beginning, this is a truck we traded another for and gave to my dad. So now he finally has the truck he's been telling me for years when I was a kid that he wanted. A 79 F-150. Two-wheel drive. Two-wheel drive. Two drive. Didn't screw that up this time. We will revisit this and finish everything on our accessory drive and the brakes and everything else that dad has a running and driving truck. But until then, make sure you subscribe to my channel, subscribe to Junkyard Mook and all of our friends to catch more of our crazy shenanigans for free here on YouTube. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.